Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little bit here, um, but with COVID and, and work and items like that, it's been a little bit hard to find time in the evenings to make a video outside of my normal working hours. But we're back and this is by far the most requested video uh, that I've had. And I've had numbers of people request this. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the Hybrid Assistant app um, the hybrid reporter works with the hybrid assistant app. So that'll actually be covered probably in a separate video. Don't want to make this too long. Um, but this is by far the most requested hybrid assistant app. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So you probably remember the hybrid assistant app from my last video. So that was our monitoring those Prius hybrid battery temperatures. Um, it's really useful for that. There were a lot of items within the app that I did not touch on. Um, but you'll also notice that I have it up on my screen here. So what I've searched for in Google on my Galaxy Note 9 is just hybrid assistant app. And you'll notice it is, brings up two results. Now, these are the two that I have. If you look through some of the more recent um, options here, you'll see some videos. You'll notice they're also not recent. So the most recent video I could find was in mid-2019. That's you know over a year ago at this point now in September. Um, so we definitely... I feel like this would be helpful for anyone looking into how does this app work? How could it help me drive? What information does it offer? So that's what we'll be covering today. Um, you're welcome to explore some of these frequently asked questions in this blog here. Um, the developer is really awesome. They're actually able to get in touch with you if you do have questions. Um, but, you know, as the app becomes more powerful or more uh, well known, there's going to be more and more people who use it and probably more and more people who reach out and the developer won't be able to respond. So I'm hoping to make this a little, a little easier on them, and then also provide some answers to questions that I had when I first downloaded the app. So I'll go ahead and open up our app here, the Hybrid Assistant app, and we'll go ahead and get right into it. All right, so first item, Hybrid Assistant app, you'll wanna make sure you do install it. You also wanna make sure that you have permissions to location and storage. You may be wondering, why does it need my location? That is because it's going to use your location services and your GPS to track your speed, which, as you can imagine, would be useful for tracking things like miles per gallon, but also for calculating other items such as, well, where you went, your trip maps, things that you will see when you go do your reporting. Um, and then obviously storage to store that data. Now, my car is currently off, and I'm actually going to go back to our landscape mode here. My car is currently off, and I'm going to go ahead and go to open and it will load up my hybrid assistant app. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you have an ODB reader. We've covered this in a previous video as well. You also want to make sure that you select where it says waiting car. That's where actually you can make a single click. Now I've already connected to my ODB reader, so it won't let me now. But if I click on that waiting car, that section in the middle that's now purple, you can select your ODB reader rather than clicking the wrench and then clicking your uh, Bluetooth settings, which appear in your wrench menu. But if you've already connected and your car is off, it will allow you to check your 12 volt battery. So here, that is the first set thing that I wanted to cover today because most people, they don't even know where the Prius battery is. Uh, it's actually in the back of the car. So you can check your 12 volt battery directly from that ODB port using the hybrid assistant app before you even start the car. So that's pretty neat. Now, once I start the car, I'm gonna go ahead and start it. I'm also going to put it in EV mode to start, start off. So that way I don't need to have the engine running. You'll notice all of our gauge binnacles and all of our items here have lit up. So now I can see all of these items on my screen. Now, specifically our temperatures are what I touched on last time, but I'll be going through from top left to bottom right to cover all of our items today. So that way we know exactly what's going on. In the top left, we have our speed. Now, if we have location turned off on our phone, which this one I currently do, and I can actually turn that on real quick, turn on our location. We'll then see our GPS uh, light up here and it may take just a few moments. But while it's looking for that, you can see there's our GPS speed. We have number of satellites we're connected to, our speed factor. So that's actually in the settings. If we wanted to go in and adjust our uh, speed factor, maybe our speed is incorrect for any reason. GPS should be the most accurate anyway. Our average speed, our current acceleration. Now this is in kilometers per hour, even though I've set it to miles per hour. It's one of those items that just hasn't been addressed um, with an update. Hopefully they'll adjust that so that way when we choose miles per hour, it will then correct to kilometers per hour. Sorry, I'm in the United States. We hate the Imperial, or we love our Imperial system. 
Uh, then we have fuel, which is in terms of gallons. We also have our fuel tank. So this is showing 1.54 gallons. I have one pip of gas left, so that's pretty accurate. Um, though this does jump around wildly and the instruction manual within the app does say that this can be uh, obnoxiously incorrect. So just don't pay huge attention to the amount of fuel you've used per trip. And to this, uh, pay attention to your gauge on your dash. Internal odometer, this is always displayed zero for me. I've never been able to get it to display the actual mileage in my car, uh, but I do have 89.8 thousand miles, um, but I also don't need to see the odometer within the app anyway, so not a huge complaint there. If I click uh, the miles per hour again, it will simply fall off, and then I do not have to click it again. It will get rid of that display. The next item is our braking right here. So if I click on this one, um, it will display all sorts of information about our braking. So we have, um, as well as other information. So we have the amount of time of our trip. We have our trip distance, our average speed for the trip, the number of milliliters of fuel, the average liter uh, per percentage of fuel. Uh, we also have the number of brakings and ignitions and average temperature. We also have the change in altitude, the change in the state of charge, way more information than the average person is going to need to see while driving. So I continue. I know this is a lot of information. This video will probably be longer, but we're going to be able to get through what a lot of this stuff does so you can decide how you want to use this app. Uh, to the right of that is our temperatures. We've covered this on the last video. This is our motor generator temperatures up top, inverter temperatures below that, hybrid battery temperatures below that, and then inside and outside temperatures within the vehicle. It's also displayed up here. Motor generator is the one in blue. You have your outside temperature right there. Your motor, uh, sorry, your engine temperature is up top at 78 in blue. Motor generator is below that. Um, the way you can tell, this one kind of looks like an electric motor, whereas that one just looks like a piston. And then 82 and this electric bolt is our um, inverter temperature. Then you have your phone temperature at 95 and your interior temperature, which is your steering wheel. Most importantly, um, when looking at temperatures, I usually gauge, uh, I usually look first at the uh, piston for the temperature of the motor. It should hover right around 192 to 195 degrees. It'll also turn red to indicate if it's too hot, yellow if it's, you know, approaching or getting warmer, um, and then blue right here if it's outside of operating temperature and too cold, which is the case now. Uh, and then our inverter temperature should be anywhere from 100 to about 130 uh, they have been known to overheat in some Priuses, especially the Gen 3s between 2010 and 2015. So it's always nice to be able to just be able to just glance at that while driving uh, to know what our inverter temperature is currently at. Our next one over here, um, I'm going to shift down to where it says average, and it currently has the infinity symbol. So this is our average consumption or average miles per gallon. You can see that very tiny in the bottom right uh, for the trip. So it's currently infinity because the engine is not turned on. If I click it again, I'm going to get the instantaneous miles per gallon, which is still as infinity. I can click it again, and here I get my gallons per hour, and this is again instantaneous. And then I can do total gallons, um, and again, this is, this is going to be relatively accurate, but not perfect because it works off of what we already covered uh, for our speed and what we have for our fuel and our tank, um, which again is advertised as not being the most accurate. Um, and then you also have average kilometers per, uh, or sorry, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Again, 100 kilometers can't have that in terms of miles, kilometers per mile for those of you with Teslas out there. Uh, then we click it one more time. We have the total number of kilowatt hours used. So just sitting in the car in EV mode, I've used uh, 2% of a kilowatt hour, um, 0 0.023 kilowatt hours. Click it again. And then we're in average liters per kilometer. One more time, we're back to where we were at. Uh, here we have our intake temperature for our battery. So if we wanted to start cooling the battery, we would suck in 80 degree air to cool an 82 degree battery. And then A indicates that it's going to automatically kick on the fan per what I have set in our settings. And then our current fan speed is zero. If I click this once, you'll notice that A goes away. We're gonna let this operate exactly how Toyota has intended. If nothing is there, we click it again, outlined in yellow. Now it's going to kick on the fan manually and you'll see it'll jump that speed up um, and then here in our video, in just a few seconds, you'll actually hear that fan kick on and it will jump all the way up to six um, and the range of speeds go from one to six. So it's not going to go any higher than six. That's just the arbitrary rating that was assigned uh, by Toyota. And you can hear that fan kick on. I'm actually going to turn that off and go back to A. 
All right, down here we have our EV. So this indicates whether you are in EV mode. It will show in this uh, yellow color if you're in EV mode. If you start to hit the gas, so I'm in park currently and I'm not gonna go and drive while I'm trying to explain this app here. But if I were to go and drive, this would turn red. Um, and I started to, to press on the gas, it will turn red if you try to use EV mode while the state of charge is below 60% because the optimal range of the battery is between 40 and 60%. Obviously, the, you can go slightly below 40%, around 38. You can also go above 60% all the way up to 80% if you were to descend from like a large mountain or something. If you click that, you will see a fuel map. So you can actually see this will act very, very slowly shift from the left to the right. And this is your miles per gallon charted on a nice graph where you then can also get what you chose. And this is the same box that we have already clicked for your miles per gallon uh, with that chart at the same time, if you'd like. Click it again and we go to our uh, miles per gallon. I believe this do also does kilowatt hours uh, per kilometer um, and it displays in terms of gas pumps. And then you can click it one more time, get your watt hours per kilometer. Um, so again, your, your Tesla owners are going to like a chart like this to s compare against. Um, or if you've been in a Tesla, you've seen a similar chart. Uh, but again, really wish that was in watt hours per mile, but I can get over it. All right, uh, next one. So this is our number of time spent moving, how many miles we've gone, but it also displays this percentage in terms of, uh, of those seconds that we've been moving, how many of those were in EV mode or with the engine not drawing fuel. And right now, obviously it's zero where we haven't been doing any uh, movement. And the same is true with our distance. Of our distance traveled, how much of that distance was done in either EV mode or no gas being uh, siphoned from the engine, from the gas tank or from the gas tank to the engine. So pretty cool there that you can see those percentages. It's actually around 20% on average. And I can do another demo of this app while driving, uh, which will also be able to see some of this information in context. All right. Uh, I can actually click on this as well to see the total time. I can also then switch back to total and moving. So kind of nice there. Um, and that's all that will do. To the right of that, uh, we do have probably where I spend the most time when I'm using this app. So this is by far the coolest function in my opinion. Here I can see the from the engine, the number of uh, kilowatts that is being generated. Now by the engine, obviously I mean the engine is powering the motor generator which is generating electricity in terms of kilowatts. Now this also can be measured just for gasoline power as well. It's also very common in other hybrids like the hybrid Pacif the hybrid electric Pacifica. Um, the plug-in hybrid also measures its gasoline engine output in terms of kilowatts. So it's pretty common to see that. And then on the right side, just the other side of that, you have your battery. So when it's discharging from the battery, you'll see this turquoise uh, sky blue color um, and it will ascend the graph there and it will tell you how much power is being drawn from the battery. So just 0.2 kilowatts. For those of you that know kilowatts, it's really just 200, 300 watts. And then you also have your green bar down here. If you were to charge the battery from the top to the bottom, you'd see a green bar come in for regen braking. Um, and we've covered the current charge limits um, and discharge current limits in our past video as well with the temperatures, but you can actually see those imposed limits on this graph as well, indicated by these triangles. So you can see our current discharge limit, um, our discharge current limit is 21 kilowatts, so up to 21, and that's our blue triangle. And then uh, charge current limit is minus 25 kilowatts, so that's our green bar down below. That's as far as it will ever go. So that tells me we're within uh, our operating temperatures and the Prius is happy. All right, uh, down here we have our motor. So it's our engine, I should say, it's at zero. RPMs, it will display RPMs. I'm gonna kick us out of EV mode to charge our battery as well and turn on our AC. Uh, but here you'll see our RPMs. You'll also see S1A, so our engine is in stage 1A. This goes to stage four. Um, you'll notice as our temperature climbs from 78, you'll actually notice, um, you'll notice that the um, engine RPM will change. You can also see that we're charging the battery um, currently at about 600, 700 watts. It's kind of cool there. Um, so as our engine actually approaches 105 degrees, I believe this will change to S2 and I would be able to use EV mode. Right now, currently if I hit the EV button, it will tell me it's not available and that's because I'm still in stage 1A. So, but if you're ever hitting that EV button at a light 
and it says not available, it could be because you're in stage 1A. So kind of nice to know what that does. Now, if I click on this, it'll tell me our MG1 or motor generator 1 RPM. You also have motor generator 2 RPM. And then you also have um, your different, and I'm not going to get into ST, FT, and LT, FT, but those are fuel trims for short and long term. Um, not really helpful for the average person to use, um, more for long term checking to make sure your engine's operating appropriately. Uh, but you also have your load, your acceleration, your grams per kilowatt hour. So those grams of fuel per kilowatt hour, um, which is, I guess, kind of nice to see if the fuel you're using is being effectively used. Uh, but most of this stuff within the engine, I don't use on a daily basis, uh, but it could be helpful maybe in the future. And then I've already touched on the battery, which is in the, bo in the bottom right. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I typically use this app to monitor both the battery temperature, which I have a whole video dedicated to. That's our last video. And then I also use it to monitor um, this highball within this menu here, which I can't really show you unless I'm driving. So like I said, I will do a whole other video on how to use this while driving, but I think it's first best really important that I show you exactly what it looks like to understand what's in the app at first. I feel like all the other videos out there, I've watched several of them, they don't explain how this app functions and what all of these buttons do, so they don't know how to interpret it. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Uh, last item down here in the bottom right, you see this 1.6 that just turned yellow, 1.7. That's telling you how many uh, data capture or data points you have per second. So 1.7 is actually pretty low. I would like this to be right near three, um, but it will increase the ability of the app to basically refresh uh, more commonly or more quickly. So if I turn on my AC here um, and I crank up the fan, you'll notice my power draw is currently at 1.1 kilowatts. If I crank up that fan, you'll see it does actually adjust in about real time. I turn it off. Yeah, and it adjusts very quickly. So 1.6 is definitely enough. I would like to see it at three. Um, but it's still usable, uh, but still nice to know how that functions. Um, and then you also notice it automatically assigned my Prius 3 as my car. So there is that as well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I had for, for this video today. I'll do another whole video coming up here soon. Hopefully by the end of the week here, I'm starting to have a little bit more time where I can do a demo of this being driven in a parking lot where it's safe. Um, and explain how primarily this top right function will work for the highball, um, which is that little little uh, dark gray circle there. So hope you guys have a good one. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see similar videos, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you do have any questions, put them below. I do like to answer almost every question.